Well, hello, hello. My name is Jenny Backus, and welcome to my new channel, Let's Get Baked. So, a little bit of background on me. Um, I am a mama, and I am a wife, and I am also a chef. So, I have been a line chef slash bartender for 25 years this year. Holy smokes, <laughs> I'm aging myself a little. Um, and about four years ago, I was diagnosed with diverticulitis. I ended up in the friggin' hospital. It was horrible. They wanted to remove part of my intestine. They wanted to remove part of my colon. I was extremely obese and overweight and unhealthy as I had been my entire adult life. So I embarked on my healthy journey. So, and I've changed a lot over the past years. I started out as a protein shake queen. Um, I managed to lose 80 pounds in five months with no exercise, um, no strict diet. Uh, I utilize protein shakes and whole food. Um, and then now here we are. So I've kind of gotten away from some of the protein shake stuff. I'm more focused on anything that's sustainable and all natural and most importantly healthy and non-toxic for us. So I mentioned that I am a chef. I'm not a baker. But uh, almost a year ago, I drove two and a half miles two and a half miles, two and a half hours to Billings, Montana. I live in a small town called Moore and I attended a sourdough workshop. So I became obsessed with sourdough, hence let's get baked. So today for my first video, I thought let's just do something fun and I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to make scones. I fucking love scones. So here's one of my little guys. I have two starters. This is Kill Bill Volume 2. I actually killed my first starter. I went on a trip to Spokane and I forgot to toss him in the fridge and he's no longer with us. So I created my first starter. This is Kill Bill Volume 2. This is pretty awesome. And then I actually did a TikTok video, whatever you want to call it, for um, three weeks. I did a series every day and we created our own starter. And this is this guy. This is who I'm actually baking with today. And this is the FNG freaking new guy. So I have two starters. I actually have three. I also have a chocolate starter and I keep him in my fridge and that is Mr. Puff Daddy. So um, if you are not familiar with sourdough baking, 10 out of 10, I recommend uh, you look into it. It's so easy guys to start yourself a starter. You can even buy starters on Etsy. Um, I'm just here to say like sourdough baking has literally changed my life. In the past four years, um, so I went gluten-free and in doing so, if I eat something with gluten, my body literally lets me know within like 30 seconds, yo, what did you just ingest? Um, no joke, some people think I'm crazy. I'm really not. Uh, so when you eat gluten, there's actually something that your body needs to produce in order for us to digest and process basically the gluten because our bodies are not meant to do that. When you go gluten-free, your body quits producing that. So when you eat something with gluten, your body is just like, whoa, what the heck is that? Um, so over the past three years, four years, I really embarked on gluten-free baking and I kind of perfected it. I have, if you are a gluten-free baker, man, hit me up. I have some of the Primo blends that you can literally duplicate anything in your kitchen. The problem with gluten-free baking for myself is gluten-free baking is full of starches and fillers and all these things that at the end of the day, guys, are not healthy for us. Like if you, uh, I'm not telling you not to do it, but I am saying that if you strictly are leading a gluten-free life, if you're celiac, you're stuck with it, and I'm sorry. Um, but if you think that you're actually leading a healthier life, you're really not. So store-bought breads are not healthy for us, period. Um, the flowers that you're buying in your store are not healthy for you. You don't know when they were milled. You don't know how long they have been in that bag. They are not fresh. I cook with a lot of flowers from the store. I try and go organic. I just actually purchased my first grain mill, which I'm going to be doing a video later. And I have some local um, hard red wheat from one of my customers that I'm going to be milling up and incorporating that into my starter because I do a whole wheat starter. You can do a starter with any kind of grain. Um, I've had the best luck with wheat, so I stick with that. Back to what I was saying. Store-bought breads, bagels, uh, cakes, pies, all that shit is full of nasty processed stuff. So 
I, and as you can see, I will kind of tilt this around, I became that crazy sourdough lady. And what started out with me wanting to do beautiful artisan loaves literally turned into me replacing every single bread product in our home. I make noodles, cakes, cookies, the best sugar cookies you've ever tasted in your life, pretzels, bagels, um, I do regular artisan loaves, I do jalapeno cheddar loaves, um, noodles, I don't know if I mentioned noodles, noodles are great. Today uh, we're going to be making scones, which is pretty exciting. Um, nan bread is fucking incredible, guys, I'm here to say. Pancakes, waffles, anything that you can dream you can make with your starter. I use my starter to make gravies as a thickener. Um, I use it to make some of my soups, like a potato soup, you can use your starter. If you have chickens, guys, chickens can thrive off your starter. That is a great thing to do. Uh, I'm going to be doing another video down the road, gardening with your starter. Your starter, your, your plants, your flowers, your vegetables, oh my gosh, this shit will just make them go crazy. So I'm super excited. I live in central Montana. Um, yesterday was like negative four was our high and we were like negative 20 with the wind chill. So I won't be doing any gardening, gardening videos just yet, but stay tuned because sourdough is just incredible. Um, so let's just get busy. I'm already in six minutes and we're blah, 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 blah. all right. So we're going to make scones. Um, first off, what I'm going to do, the ingredients and directions will be in the comments. So I'm just gonna do this pretty fast and I'm gonna have to pop this into the freezer and then we'll splice together a video and I'll get, anyway, that's all my, my problem. So, all right, uh, first what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix together all your wet ingredients. So it's gonna be egg. Here is my starter. I already have him out in a little measuring cup and heavy whipping cream. So you can also use coconut cream with this. Normally I would do that. Um, but I did purchase some heavy whipping cream. We try and lead a dairy-free lifestyle most of the time. I just purchased this, guys, because I wanted to make us see how easy it was to make homemade ice cream. I paid $17 fucking dollars for this. I buy heavy whipping cream like three times a year when I make uh, clam chowders. I had no idea. But I opted for this because it literally... Where is my ingredients? Now I can't see ingredients whole milk and cream so every single other heavy whipping cream that I looked at had polysorbate 80 it had mono this and diglyceride that and I'm just like yo I just want heavy whipping cream so even the ones that were like $13 had products in there that are not healthy for us polysorbate 80 not a good thing look it up so I went with this okay so what we're gonna do we're literally going to mix all of our wet ingredients together first so I have my small little mixing bowl out and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna measure my heavy whipping cream and add that. To that, I'm going to crack an egg and add that. We get, we're, we're fortunate enough where I live, um, I get farm fresh eggs from one of my customers. I would love to have chickens, but um, I have a border collie and that, it would just be a constant battle, so. All right, so I have my heavy whipping cream, I have my egg, now I'm going to spoon in my starter. And once you get all of these together into your bowl, you are just going to whisk them together. So, I also wanted to share with you guys one of my favorite things. If you guys have not used a Danish dough whisk, you are missing out. Even if you don't do sourdough, if you're just a bread baker, Yo, this shit is the bomb. All right, so I have everything in my bowl. I am just going to give this a good whisk. So everything is together. They say that you can actually use this whisk in place of a blender. Mm, I don't know if I'd go that far, but it's super great. It's ergonomically designed. Left or right handed people can use this, super cool. So, okay, you're gonna get all your white ingredients. You're gonna toss that aside and then I forgot one thing though. I forgot my lemon. So the recipe I am using actually called for orange, it was an orange and cranberry recipe. I'm switching it up and literally just doing a blueberry recipe, but I am going to grate in a little bit of um, lemon. So I don't know if you guys do this. I keep, I need to get a freezer container, but I actually have some on order. Um, I keep 
some lemons and bananas froze in my freezer because they are just super easy. So if my lemons start to get gushy and mushy, which sometimes I'll buy a big bag, and they already end up being kind of bad, which pisses me off, but it is what it is. So when I grate, I come towards myself. Some people go away. I just, it's easier for me to control it coming towards myself. And you're just kind of peeling it. And so I will just go all the way around until I get however much it is that I think I want in there. You can go back and forth. It's a lot easier to grate a frozen lemon than it is a fresh one, let me tell you what. And what's kind of cool, you can literally grate the entire thing. So at some point you're not doing the rind, you're actually getting part of the lemon. Toss it back in your freezer and you're good to go. All right, so these are gonna be blueberry lemon. My husband is not a big lemon fan, but you can see I actually made it into the lemon a little bit. There we go, pop that back into my bag. Give it a little stir. And now I'm gonna move on to the dry ingredients. All right, I've already measured out and weighed my flour, so it's already in here. For this, I am literally just gonna add everything that needs to be added. So. Redmond salt, I 10 out of 10 recommend this if you want real salt. All right, this is half a teaspoon of that. Add that in. This calls for half a cup of sugar. I'm not a big sugar fan, guys. This is organic raw cane sugar. I just went with a quarter of a cup. So usually any recipe that I make that calls for sugar, because we don't do a whole lot of sugar, I always cut it in half. Um, it's enough for me. And you could actually sub this out with coconut sugar or whatever you're using. Next up is gonna be baking powder. I actually make my own baking powder, guys. So if you're corn free, I'm corn free. One thing you can't use is baking powder because it's derived usually nine times out of 10 from corn. So I make my own with baking soda and cream of tartar. So handy dandy little fun little trick there. So this calls for, and this actually is one of my favorite little scoopers. It's got everything on here. So like this calls for one and a half teaspoons instead of having it just grab the one teaspooner and the half a teaspooner. This little gadget is super nice. So I got my half a teaspoon right here. Now, I'm gonna note, when I add the liquid to this, I am going to move very fast. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot of talking because once you add your liquid to your baking powder or baking soda, man, it starts working. So also, you want this dough to be cold. So I have the butter that I'm gonna be putting into this recipe is still in my fridge, which I'm going to pull out right now. Okay, got all my dry ingredients. Oh. Last one up and then we'll do the butter. Last one up is also cornstarch or arrowroot starch. I am actually corn free like I just said. So I'm gonna use arrowroot starch. You can sub this stuff one to one. So one tablespoon of that. And in your bowl it goes. Okay. Who doesn't freaking love scones? I am obsessed with scones. Okay, so I have my baking powder, I have my arrowroot starch. To the wet, I would have added um, my vanilla extract, but I'm also sober. I am three and a half years sober from alcohol. And since I do a lot of baking, one of the things that I wasn't too keen on was your vanilla extract. Any flavoring that you buy down that baking aisle, orange, almond, vanilla, um, whatever it is, just be aware that there's alcohol in that. Um, so that you're giving your kids that. I'm not saying that it's good or bad or indifferent or whatever, but there are, are, are alternatives and I highly recommend, if there's a natural alter alternative, just look into it. It can't hurt. So this is what I use. You can get it at Natural Grocers. I actually found this stuff at Fred Meyer when I was in Spokane. I was super stoked because I used to order it on Amazon. So when you get your vanilla powder, it's made without alcohol. Super important for me. Um, I noticed that Trader Joe's actually also carries a vanilla extract that is liquid that is also alcohol free. Um, that is something else that I would probably look into. So since I'm using a powder, I'm gonna add it to my flour mixture. If you are using regular vanilla extract, add that to your wet mixture. All right, so once I get this all together, I am just gonna take 
a little baby whisk, and I'm gonna stir all my dry ingredients together. Now, this is where it's gonna go fast, guys. So you're gonna put a little, a little well in the bottom, a little hole, however you wanna do it. And this is when you're gonna take your wet mixture. Remember, this is our sourdough starter and our heavy cream and our lemon zest. You're gonna add this and then you are going to mix until you get a shaggy dough. And I'm gonna show you what that means. So once I get it mixed, I'm gonna put it in here because we're gonna do a series of folds and stretches right away. Um, the cool thing with sourdough, you can. this is a recipe that you can make and bake within an hour. Most of my recipes I do a long ferment on, which means like if I'm gonna do um, a bread loaf tonight, I would prep it, I would do my folds and stretches, I would let it chill on my counter to overnight ferment uh, for 12 hours, and then likely I'm gonna pop it in my fridge and I'm gonna let that sucker ferment for another 48 hours. The longer you let your sourdough ferment, the more gut beneficial it is and the more easily digestible it is. I'm doing this quick because my husband is going to be home in an hour for lunch. I'm going to surprise him with scones. So once we mix this, I'm going to I'm going to explain this really quick. I'm going to mix it. We're going to fold and stretch it. I'm going to pop it out onto my floured container. We're going to pat it. I need to. We're going to pat it down. I'm going to cut it, put it on my parchment paper, and we're going to pop it in the freezer for 30 minutes. Now, when I pop it in the freezer for 30 minutes, when I pull it out, it's going directly into the oven. Boom, done. Let's say uh, you wanted to build these tonight with your starter and you obviously don't want to eat scones right before you go to bed. Not the healthiest option. You can pop them in your freezer and leave them in there overnight and then just pull them out tomorrow morning and bake them normal. So we always have options, guys. But all right, we ready for this? So we're going to add in our wet to our dry. Oh man, with that lemon zest, it smells phenomenal. I'm sure it would be just as good with the orange and cranberries. My husband is just not, he's not much of a cranberry fan, so. All right, so I'm gonna get this. And this dough whisk, I'm telling you guys, here, I'm gonna tilt this down just a little. Let's see if you watch. It is incredible, absolutely incredible. And we're literally getting a shaggy dough here, guys. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you can see it's all kind of coming together. Definitely shaggy. Okay, now we are going to grate our butter in. Needs to be cold. So here we go, I have a hunk of butter. I'm gonna grab some gloves. So you're not get super greasy. Gloves are your best friend while baking. All right, so here goes our butter. And I'm just using a regular handheld grater. And we are just going to grate, 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 grate. I don't know if you have never grated butter into your recipes and if it calls for gold butter. This is like the greatest hack I ever freaking learned. Um, I find it easier to wear gloves while I'm doing this because you will get greasy and it's kind of hard to keep a hold of it. So, uh, very super important though, you want your butter to be cold. remember we want to keep this dough cold. All right, getting down there. Whew, it's hard to get these last little bits. All right. Use your thumb. Just be careful. Don't cut yourself, guys. I have had some nasty grater cuts in my time. All right, so we have the butter in there. Now I'm actually gonna use my hands and I'm gonna get in there and just mix this all together. Again, this is why 
gloves are going to be your friend. transfer this over here so that you guys can see the stretch and fold process. This is going to be a little hard to do because our dough is very thick. Now usually when I do a regular recipe, you're letting it autolyze for about 30 minutes. So you're not really going to be able to stretch and fold much. You're basically just going to bring it over and then fold it down into itself. And you're just trying to form some layers here. And you will see the more that you bring it up and push it down in, you are just firming up your dough a little. Now, if you have neuropathy or arthritis and you have a stand mixer, I highly recommend you use your stand mixer for this. As you can see, I mean it's working great. Getting some form on it. That butter is really working in. Oh my gosh guys, these are going to be so <laughs> Alright, so at this point, I am going to toss in my blueberries or cranberries, or whatever it is that you guys want in your scones. And again, I'm gonna continue just, and it's gonna turn my dough purple, just so you guys know. And I'm gonna continue bringing it up, folding it back down, and literally just making it stronger. Giving it some form, getting those blueberries in there, and you can see why gloves are your freaking friend. All right, so once you get those in there pretty dang good, it's pretty dang good, and your hands are cold, let me tell you what. All right, this is what we have. So, I'm going to put on a new glove. I think you can get these on Amazon. These are the best. I get these in Spokane at URM Cash and Carry. I freaking love that place. I think I paid $4.99 a box. I don't think they're too expensive. I got these other ones for my husband. They were on sale there. He got like three times as many. They're absolute shit. Get okay, what you paid for. Don't forget that, guys. All right. So, I have my little, my little dough, my little dough former here. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour out. Not a whole lot, guys. Just enough so that my dough does not stick. What we are going for here is we are going for a round three quarter inch disc. So think pizza. All right, now I put a few extra blueberries in here. So mine's gonna be extra freaking messy. Um, also, you can roll these out or you can use your hand, whatever is going to work best for you. I honestly am not even going to mess with my roller because of the blueberries. So as you can see, let me tilt this down just a little. I'm just going to press it into a disc like so. If you don't have one of these baking mats, they are cool as shit. I had never had one up until a couple of months ago. Okay, so we want three quarters thick, inch thick. That's probably about there. Now, when you cut this, remember, <laughs> do not saw it because you're going to pull the dough. You want to just do one and done. So, pull these off. These are phenomenal. I freaking love these things. If you don't have one, you should grab one. I'm literally going to go down and down. And you're gonna cut it like you would a pizza. So there's that one, and that one, one there, and one there. 
You're gonna end up with eight pieces, guys. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm gonna lift this up a little so you can see. Literally cut it like a pizza. Okay, put this to the side. Whoops, sorry about that, guys. Okay, next up, we're getting ready to throw it in the freezer. So you want to have your prepared baking sheet with parchment paper on it. Because remember, this is going in the freezer, guys, for 30 minutes. And then we're going to pop them out, pop them in the oven, and we are going to enjoy fabulous sourdough scones. All right. So I'm going to use... I actually got this guy with my scraper on Amazon. Super cool. I am just going to lift up these little pizzas. Look at those guys. And you just want to lay them out. And remember, we're just, you wanna make room for, you can either put these on two, part, two pans, um, or you could just do one. However much room you're gonna have in your freezer and whatever you have to use. This is just what works best for me doesn't mean it's going to work best for you. But as you can see, without all my babbling, like putting this together, if you had all the ingredients out on your counter, you'd literally, literally be done in 10 minutes. Then you're going to pop it in the freezer for 30 minutes. And then we're going to bake these for another, I think it's 30, 20 minutes total. Um, so right about an hour and you're having amazing sourdough scones. So, and these aren't even going to compare. I mean, you saw everything I put in. I know what I'm putting in. Um, and I don't know if that's important to you, but that's what's important to me. All right, move these guys around a little. Okay. So I have all my little scones. Ooh, almost lost it. All my little scones on my baking pan. So I am going to go hop these in my freezer pop these in my freezer for 30 minutes and then I will be back and we will get these puppies baked. All right guys we are back. Here they are nice and froze. Okay so next step before you bake them and we are going to bake them you're going to preheat your oven to 425. You're going to bake them for five minutes and then you're going to shut that oven down to 375 and you're going to bake them for another 15 to 20 minutes. So before we do that the recipe calls for two eggs. So the first egg goes into our recipe. The second egg we put on as a wash. So I got my egg in here. I added one tablespoon of water and you are just going to mix this up. Oh, by the way, this is like the greatest mixer ever for eggs. My Oma gave me this. I just freaking love it. Okay. Get yourself one of these. I also have a paintbrush one, which I like, but when I'm doing eggs, I like to use the rubber. That way I can make sure that I get it super clean. I don't know, raw eggs just kind of freak me out. So you're literally going to brush each one with the egg. This is just gonna give it a nice, crispy, beautiful finish. Remember, we eat with our eyes before we taste anything. And as a chef, that is always, presentation is like the most important thing to me. Even when I'm at home, it's so funny. I am all about presentation because for me, like I eat with my eyes first. We all do it. All right, so we you wanna get that egg wash all over them. And then, this is optional, but I'm gonna do it because it's good. You can sprinkle just a little bit of uh, like turbino sugar on them. Just a bigger sugar. I just use raw sugar and I will show you what that is. All right, you get those guys good. <laughs> They're gonna be so yummy. Okay, so if you guys can see that, the, whoops, let's go there. The raw sugar, it's just, it's unmessed with basically and it has not been ground up and bleached. So when you guys buy just plain old basic sugar in the store, it's been bleached. Uh, not the greatest stuff for us. So. I am just going to take and see if you guys can see this, move this down, here we go. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of sugar onto each one, 
not doing anything crazy. Don't call the diabetes police. We are just putting a little on there for a crunch and a little sweetness. Then I'm gonna pop these in the oven. So I like to use my pizza pan, my stone. Um, if you guys have a stone, works great for bagels, for these guys, for pretzels. So I'm gonna pop these onto my stone for five minutes and then I'm gonna turn my oven down to 375 and I'm gonna bake them for another 15 to 20 minutes and I will be back to show you the yumminess that we're about to eat. Also, I just wanna say that while you are letting your scones freeze for 30 minutes, it's always a really, really, really good idea to multitask and use your time productively because I had quite the mess after I built this. As you guys saw, I used a lot of containers. While my stuff was chilling in the freezer, guess who got all her dishes done, except for what I've just now used. Use your time productively when you are in the kitchen because what stresses me out the most is to have a messy kitchen. So if you clean as you go, guys, you are not gonna get frustrated. You're not gonna get burned out on cooking. Just clean as you go. So, all right, we're gonna pop these guys in the oven and I will be back. All right, we're back and they are done. Wait till you see these beauties. Look at these. Nice crispy crust starting to turn a little brown. The blueberries. All right, so I have some butter on top of this guy. I am so excited. Texture is awesome. Mm. The blueberries and the lemon was a nice touch. I love the crispy, the crust. Mm. Fluffy, delicious. A little bit of the crunch of the sugar that you get on top. I will definitely be making these again. Mmm. Just look at that, guys. Wonderful. Alright. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll see you next time. And let's get baked.